question. Do you like that? It's like Call the order the November 5th. <coughs> Call the order the November 5th council meeting. The clerk read the course, please. Thank you, Mayor. The future of this republic is in the hands of the American voter. And if I may, I'd just like to read a couple of things on our agenda. Reminding everybody tomorrow is election day. Our polls open at 7 in the morning, close at 8 at night. And one thing, if you have a chance, take a moment to say thanks to the poll workers for all they do for the city of Sheboygan. They would appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will the clerk call the roll, please? It may be a little slower tonight because things aren't working exactly as they should, so. It's modern technology. Modern technology, and our <clears throat> boss is in... Somewhere. Michigan, Nebraska, or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> United States, I guess. Come on. Okay, like I said. It's not working well. Hmm. Okay, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Hey. Bellinger? Here. Warren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Uh, here. Sorry. Here. Donahue? Here. Hammond? Here. Heideman? Here. Koth? Here. Lassard? Here. Lewandowski? Here. Matichak? Here. Bracelor? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Percy? Here. Wangaman? Here. 16 present. Quorum is present. Will Alderman Heideman lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alderman Hammond, the approval of the minutes. Thank you. I uh, move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any changes or discussion? You can do it all eyes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. There are appointments. There's none. Confirmation of the mayor's appointments. <coughs> Alderman Hammond. Honorable, I'm sorry, go ahead. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Amy Horst to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority to fill the unexpired term of Mark Miller, whose term expires 4-28-2014, signed by the mayor. Alderman Hammond. Move to confirm. Second. It's been moved and seconded to confirm the appointments. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Oh. The clerk will call the roll. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. 16. Motion carried. Public forum tonight? None. None. Moving on. Mayor's now um, annou uh, announcements. Uh, again, just reminding everybody to get out and vote tomorrow. Very important. Two one, a hearing amending the zoning map to a change of property proposed lot one south of Washington Avenue Frontage Road. Any persons wishing to be heard? Any persons wishing to be heard? And any persons wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Been moved and seconded to close the hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 3 1 through 3 13, the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and file our, all ROs. Accept all RCs and pass all resolutions. Is there any discussion on 3-1 one, one through 3-13? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichak? 
Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Bellinger? Aye. 16. The other way is so much easier. Motion. <laughs> Carried. 4 1, a communication from Mary Burkhart requesting that she be able to present a unique issue regarding her seniority. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept and file. Second. It's been moved and seconded that communication be accepted and filed. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Reports of officers, 5-1, submitting a, from the city clerk and the LTC tax levy report will lie over. 5-2 lies over. 5-3 through 5-13 will be referred. 6-1 we will hold for 8-1. Eight, six, two, six, three, and six, four, all will lie over. Six, five through six, seven will be referred. Seven, one, report from law and licensing recommending denying taxi license number seven, nine, seven, one, seven. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adapted. Second. Been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwood. Is Raina Flores here tonight? She is not here. We invited her to our meeting twice, and neither time did she show up. Yes, please. Is there any other discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Ellinger? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 16. Motion carries. 7 2, a report of law, from law and licensing recommending denying taxi owner's license 9719. Alderman Vanderweel. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderweel. Is Marcus Newton here this evening? He is not here. Um, the committee voted five to zero to deny his license uh, based on the, his um, lengthy record as well as the police recommendation. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Der Aye. <laughs> Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 16. Motion carried. 7 3 from report of from long licensing recommending denying taxi driver's license 9707. Alderman Vanderweel. Mr. Mayor, I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderweel. Is Paul Phil here this evening? He's not here. Um, we did invite him to our meeting twice and he did not appear. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. <coughs> Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 16. Motion carried. 7-4 report from law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license 9756. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. It's been moved, moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. Is Brittany Henry here this evening? She is here. Um, the committee had voted three to two to deny her license. Um, she had a 2009 disorderly conduct and a pending 2012 serving a minor. Um, it was her first night actually carting someone and also her third night on the job. Um, I guess we could probably hear from her for the rest. Thank you. Would the applicant like to speak, please? 
payment address. Yeah. So you don't need it? I do need it. Can you please give us your name and address for the record, please? And you may want to pull that mic down just a little. I'm a little short. <laughs> okay. Brittany Henry, my address is 1532 Alabama Avenue. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. It's, I've been racking my brain since the last time I was in here, and it was a three to two vote. And I've been doing everything possible to make myself a better bartender. I've been carting every person that walks through the door. I don't care if they look like they're 80 years old or not, I still ask for their ID. I've learned to use the machine, I've learned how to swipe, I've learned how to do all that. I've been studying things online. Also, Tommy is putting us through the tips course as soon as that is available. I've, I can't correct my mistake. The only thing I can do is learn from it. It's, this is my means of income. I'm going through a divorce. I've just found a new apartment. And this is how I'm able to support my son and myself. And without this, I'm a little lost right now. And so I'd just really appreciate a second chance. I do. And I can guarantee it's not going to happen again because I will not allow it to happen again. Thank you. Any questions of the applicant? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, Ma'am, where are you working with this license? I'm working at Vibes. At where? Vibes. Where is that located? On South 8th. Okay. Uh, are you have any other employment besides bartender? Yes, I do. I work my 40 hours a week, if labor allows it, at Mobile One. I do oil changes, that kind of stuff. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, the circumstances surrounding the underage, um, was it a friend? Was it just misread the card? What, what were the was circumstances around that? Basically, nervous first night as an actual... I was so excited to have my license, and I misread it I completely. Any other questions of the applicant? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it was indicated that the, uh, the charge for the underage is, is pending. Has, have you gone to court on that? As no, not yet? yet. Okay, so are you contesting that charge in any way? Not really. I'm just going to accept the fine because I did it. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to the committee report then. The, the committee's recommendation is to <coughs> deny the license. Any other discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Hammond? No. Heidemann? No. I'm sorry. No. Thank you. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? No. Was that a no? Yes, a no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scott. How do you answer that one? <laughs> Matichak? Aye. Raisler? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Wongman? No. Bellinger? No. Boren? No. Carlson? No. Decker? No. Donahue? No. <clears throat> Three eyes, 13 noes. So the motion loses so the... We need to grant. We need a motion to grant the license. Alderman Van der Wey. Motion to grant the license. Second. I'm sorry. So we move and second to grant the license. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Hoth? No. Lassard? No. Lewandowski? Yes. Matichak? No. Raisler? Yes. Van Akron? Aye. Van Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongaman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. <clears throat> 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carried. and the license is granted. 
committee report from law and licensing recommending amending section 130-59 of the municipal code so as to create additional regulations relating to taxi cabs in the city. Alderman Vandewiller. Thank you. Make a motion to accept and adapt and Second. pass the substitute resolution or substitute ordinance. Second. It's been moved and seconded <laughs> to adopt, accept the committee report and adopt the ordinance. Under discussion, Alderman Vandewiller. I do make me, excuse me, I do need to make an amendment. And that is on section two. Um, the last, very last sentence, um, all ordinances or parts thereof in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict, and this ordinance shall be in effect from and after its passage and publication beginning January 1st, 2013. You've given that to the city, or the city clerk has a copy of that. No, but that's okay. 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 Steve, does. Steve, do we want to explain why, please, city attorney? Um, Yes, it was my suggestion. There's a provision in here for uh, taxis to be equipped with meters that have to, they have to install them and they have to have them tested and certified. They also have to put lights on top of the vehicle that tie into the meters. Uh, and as it was worded, this ordinance would be effective upon passage and publication, which would be later on this week, likely. And uh, technically, Somebody be in violation if they didn't have their meter installed in the taxi uh, upon passage and publication. There wasn't any uh, any uh, leeway or, or time allowed for uh, coming into compliance. So the ordinance being effective January 1 will give taxis an opportunity to get their meters and get them tested and, and uh, get their rates uh, approved and all of that. So it gives them amount of time before they would be in violation. Okay. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess just a couple questions on this. Um, on the I amendment? So we got to vote on the amendment first. Nope. Go ahead. Any questions or discussion on the amendment? All those in favor second. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you. On the, amend, on the amended <clears throat> Could we back resolution. up? Was there a second to Jody's? No. I didn't hear a second, second. on Jody's amendment. Second. Yeah. Somebody did? I thought I heard a couple. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be here. Um, <laughs> a couple questions on this. If, if I don't know if members of the committee could answer. Is, is there a specific problem that we're addressing this with this that we're having in the city as far as the taxi cabs that this would be covering? Is there any state laws or something that we need to come in regulation with? And also, do we know a cost as to what we're making these people um, and, and these small business owners put these devices in their taxi cabs? What is the cost of that? Do we have any idea as to you know what burden we're putting on them? Alderman Van Der Willey. Thank you. Um, the reason we brought this forward was um, there are quite a few taxi cab companies um, now in Sheboygan, and we've, we've had many complaints about stickers being changed, um, rates going up and down, people aren't sure what their rate's gonna be from one day to the next. Um, so we are um, addressing the things that we in law and licensing have had to deal with in the last few months. And the cost, was it a relative cost? It, it ranges, but about $200. Get a second before we continue discussing on the amended. Um, Vanderbilt, you made a mo are you have you made a motion to pass the substitute ordinance as amended? No. So moved. And then we need a second. second. <laughs> then we can discuss. All right. It's been moved and seconded to pass the substitute or pass the resolution as amended. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, Sue, is the taxi cab license, is it $25 per company or is it 25 bucks per cab? It's $25 um, for the company and they get one free vehicle with that. And anything additional to that is 10. Is 10? Mm -hmm. And so then uh, to follow up on Alderman Van Akron, then to put a meter in a cab is going to be about $200 per cab then, the way I understand it? At the average, yeah. Okay. Roughly. All right, thank you. 
Any other discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Cuth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. <coughs> Wangaman? <coughs> Bellinger? Aye. Foran? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 ayes, two noes. <coughs> Motion carried. 7 6. I'm sorry, 7 5. <coughs> I'm sorry, 7 6. Report from strategic planning making no more recommendation to the council regarding documents submitted by Alderman Bellinger requesting the council to solicit RFPs for an independent third party study of the city's fire and ambulance service. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I move that we accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. Under discussion, it's been moved and seconded. Under discussion, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to have the Common Council solicit RFPs for independent third party study of the fire and ambulance service. There has been a con this has been a contentious issue for the residents of the cities for years, and it is my intent by soliciting an outside organization to provide this study, the politics, emotions, and biases will be removed. This is in no way a criticism of the current fire chief. On the contrary, I believe that he's doing a good job and is a good steward of the tax dollars that he's responsible for. No one, in, no one on the Common Council has the time or expertise to conduct a comprehensive study of the fire and ambulance services. There's also several aldermen who are very passionate about these issues and their motives could be questioned. The chief, if he were to present a comprehensive study, would be viewed as biased because he is too close to the subject matter and would lose his objectivity. By having a qualified outside vendor perform this, we would remove these concerns. I have no preconceived goals or outcomes for this study. I only hope to get some direction for future action and cost savings that we can realize as a city. And I also want the public to know that we have worked with the cooperation of the fire department to provide the best service at the most economical cost. Um, I want the issue to be addressed in a way that is transparent to the residents of the city as well as the fire and ambulance personnel. It is my belief that the only way to accomplish this is through an independent third party report and recommendation. And as a side note, I've had um, um, emails back and forth in conversation with the chief, uh, the fire chief, and he has mentioned that the previous two fire chiefs as well as himself uh, have requested independent third party studies in the past. And the reason it has been um, kind of shot down is because of the cost that was involved with it. So the, uh, the dollars that are associated with the fire department are significant enough, I think, to warrant us to at least go as far as put out an RFP, look and see what the costs come in, and uh, then we can go from there and make a decision if we want to move forward or not. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger. Alderman Hammond, the motion is to accept and adopt the strategic fiscal planning the report of committee. Report yes. of committee. Do, are we filing the document? Well, we're just, my motion was to accept and adopt. If, some, if we want to do I'm, another motion to um, approve his re, um, request. Right. Right, Steve? No. Uh, no accepting and adopting <laughs> the committee report is Committee reports making no recommendation. Right. To accept and adopt the committee report is to say you're making no recommendation, which doesn't really say anything to me. Uh, you gotta decide what you wanna do with it. But accepting and adopting the committee report is just saying uh, you're not making any recommendation, but then you need to do something with the underlying document. Right. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Then I will move to accept and adopt and recommend soliciting an RFPs for an independent third party study. Second. Now we can have the discussion. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt and solicit. And 
And solicit RFPs that's for third party. That's what I meant. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mayor. I won't be voting to approve this. Um, there's several reasons. If, if we're going to be singling out one department, we, if, if you want to do these RFPs, it needs to be inclusive of all the departments within the city, not just one specific department. And I won't be approving this. We have had a referendum. The taxpayers have spoken. And we need to listen to the taxpayers. I am um, annoyed, I would say. I don't think it was an intentional anything against the fire department. First of all, we don't have all these funds to be doing all these um, studies to begin with. And there, it seems to be that there's some type of um, a group of people that are always pointing their fingers at the fire department or um, and trying to get what our taxpayers have said in the referendum and the outcry of the citizens and the constituents that I've spoken to are quite happy with how things are going. I understand trying to save money within the city and if all the departments were inclusive of this particular type of study, then I would be all for this. But singling out one group, I don't feel is fair, and I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Lassard, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, I'm going to support uh, going out for the IRFP. Uh, it's going to depend on what the cost is, whether I'll support going forward with the uh, with with the, uh, the study of the fire department. I guess I have a question for Alderman Bellinger, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, Alderman Bellinger, but when we go out for this RFP, I would imagine the cost is going to have something to do with how extensive we want the study to be, and is that going to be public protection and safeties? Uh, purview to decide what's in what we're asking these companies to do. You know, for example, we want just a study of the fire department itself as far as providing fire protection. Do we want a study of, of the ambulance service, both service-wise and how we're accounting for it? Who's, whose purview is that going to be to set up the ground rules for the RFP? Because I imagine that's going to have quite a uh, effect on what the ultimate cost is, exactly what we're looking for. Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Um, what, what I would envision happening is working together with um, Chief Administrator Amodio and putting together a specification that would go out for bid. Now, if that needs to come through a committee, I would be open to having it come through a committee. Um, if, if it could be done um, you know, with a couple aldermen and, and, the, and the Chief Administrator and the um, the purchasing director, um, you know, I'd be happy with that too. But um, I, I guess I'm not sure, you know, what the um, correct procedure or, or or way to go. But you know, I, I would be happy either way. Thank you, Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, my initial question is, um, what would we be studying? Uh, is that directed at me? Alderman. Uh, uh, thank you, Alderman Donahue. The, the, my goal on this is to see if there are some efficiencies and some action plans that we can have moving forward to see if there's any different um, uh, efficiencies that we can gain, um, economics that, uh, is it closing one station, is it closing two station, is it, uh, um, you know, there's all sorts of different things out there. I've got several, um, not several, uh, you know, quite a few constituents that have, uh, have approached me at different times and said, how come you guys don't look at the fire department, what's going on with the fire department, this and that. I personally don't have an ax to grind with the chief or the fire department. Like I mentioned before, I think the chief's doing a good job. I think he's a great steward of his tax dollars. It is a significant budget item. Um, and the reason I would like to look at it is because I'm tired of the chief having to defend himself all the time 
and I'm tired of getting all these questions whether or not the, um, the level of service that we're getting from the fire department is the most economical way to be doing it for the city. Um, so that's why I want to be as transparent as possible and, and to look at this. And to include every department is frankly ridiculous because what you would be doing is driving the cost up so high, nobody would ever approve that, you know, that kind of a study. So the, the studies aren't cheap to begin with and to target one department or thing, you know, it's because of the volume of questions and uh, concerns from constituents and I just want to make it transparent and again I don't have a predetermined outcome on what should happen with this and I think it would finally put everything to rest um, and allow the fire chief to go on uh, about his business and give us an action plan moving forward so that's that's the reason for this whole thing <coughs> uh, thank you that that starts to get a little bit clearer for me. Um, so as I understand, it would be a basic um, right from the beginning, zero planning, zero based analysis of how the city of Sheboygan receives its fire and ambulance services. Now, that may be something that we might want to study. We might want to study how we provide our police services uh, from a zero based perspective, starting right from the bottom up, and I would assume this study would look at other departments and so forth. Um, I will say, as, as I analyze it, I have a couple of issues. Um, we've had lots and lots and lots and lots of information about fire services. We've had information from similarly sized cities about how they provide services how far the response time is, how many stations there are, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> and it really doesn't seem to help us move the ball forward. What I think the issue is, and I am not suggesting it, um, but someday, somehow, somewhere, there must be some study that could be done that would take a look at the actual costs of the ambulance service, factor it in. We could hire some super accountant who once and for all could put to rest for us whether the ambulance service costs us money or saves us money. Whether we are uh, better able to, I, I hear excellent things about the, the uh, paramedics and the fire service from hospital personnel. We want to factor that in as well. But just the numbers. Is there an accountant out there somewhere? Can we get in Alan Greenspan? You know, is, is Ben Bernanke, Bernanke going to be looking for a job, you know, in a couple of months? I mean, is there just somebody that we could get who could answer that basic question for us? And I think that would resolve a lot of what we were talking about. I am going to vote against this. Uh, Alderman Bellinger, I really ap appreciate the, number one, the amount of work that you put into this because it's clear it was substantial. Um, and it, it did give me a lot to think about. But I just think it is a lot of money we're searching for somebody else to provide us with the answers for the hard decisions we need to make, and I just don't think that this is gonna move the ball forward for us. Um, so, but I do appreciate your, your consideration. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'd like to hear from the fire chief in, in reference to this. Uh, obviously, it was indicated that uh, he would possibly be in favor of uh, this study, um, if he could give his opinion on this as well as discuss the multitude of opportunities that the fire department has been requested to provide information in reference to your operations, cost, um, ambulance cost, and so on. Um, I know we had a very lengthy discussion at the strategic fiscal planning meeting in reference to this to which we came to really no recommendation, but if, if I'd like to ask the fire chief to come up and just, uh, I guess, explain his opinion on this and, and again, if you can give a I don't know if that'll be really brief, a synopsis over the last several years on how many times your department has been requested for information in reference to your operations and so on. Chief. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I wish I could answer that question of how many times I've been up here. <laughs> Truthfully, I lost count. Um, I'm sure that you're as tired of seeing me up here as I am of being up here talking about this subject. For that, <laughs> I thank Ald Alderman Bellinger for bringing this forward and hopefully uh, putting this to rest one way or another. Uh, as I said in the committee meeting um, last week, 
I'm not opposed to having this study done. If for no other reason that we finally have an end to this and we can move on, I can run a fire department. Uh, it's been very difficult to run a department on a day-to-day -day basis with this hanging over our head. And this hasn't just been, um, while I've been chief, it's been the past two fire chiefs that have had this uncertainty. So it's been 10 or 12 years that this has been going on. Um, I certainly am not opposed to a study if it's a legitimate study. Um, I think we can get good answers from that, and I'm not afraid of a study like that. Um, a lot of what I do is spending time looking at studies of other departments. What I do is take those studies and, and put in what we do here in Sheboygan and see how we measure up. For that reason, I think that it, a study is going to show that we're doing a good job here with the money that, we're, that it's costing the taxpayer to provide uh, fire protection. I am opposed to spending money on a study where the outcome is predictable, or even worse yet, where the people asking for that study are driving the results of that. I think it needs to be um, a legitimate study, as I said. A lot of the studies that I look at and read, um, I can almost tell you what the outcome is going to be just by reading who did that study. It's that predictable. And if you read those, um, a lot of the outcomes that they, they say for the departments are the same for each and every city. And that's a little concerning to me when you're spending fifty, sixty thousand dollars on a study, and uh, a couple of cities come to mind: uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan, and Lake Havasu. Uh, I believe it's in Nevada. They had studies done that their cities were not happy with. In fact, I think the Benton Harbor one. They found that the the company that did the study, all they did is cut and pasted a different city's name and placed theirs in there. Um, and really didn't do a whole lot of work on their study. And the same thing happened in Nevada, where when they got their study back, the numbers were all wrong. So I think if you're going to go ahead and spend this amount of money, um, we need to make sure that we're getting the right firm to do this study. Uh, as I said, I've looked at probably close to 20 of fire department studies in the last couple of weeks. Um, you're looking at a cost probably in the fifty dollars to $60,000 range to do a decent study of a fire department. Um, I looked at a number of other ones that have done uh, the entire city. I think you're looking at $200,000 roughly. I know Fond du Lac just had one done recently by, I think, Baker Tilly, which used to be Virtual Kraus. I think the county has used that, that company. I think it's a very good one. But again, um, you get what you, what you pay for. I think some of the common themes that you'll see come out, that I've seen come out of these studies is that we should implement a compressed air foam system of putting out fires. Um, I've read that in probably close to half of those studies. It's an expensive method. It's new technology. Um, all of our fire trucks right now are equipped with foam systems for putting out fires. Um, the compressed air, um, I don't know that fire chiefs accept it as a way of extinguishing fires. It's basically charging an entire house. Uh, with foam instead of doing interior firefighting as we do now. Um, yes, you can get by with that system with less people, but again, it's very expensive to implement. And uh, water still is the most plentiful and cheapest method of extinguishing fires. Uh, they also recommend that you upgrade your department's equipment, which is very costly. They recommend going to quince, which is a combination of an engine and a ladder truck. Um, City of Sheboygan purchased one of those in 2005. Um, what we found out, what other fire departments that have found out that bought quince is they do a lot of things for you. They pump water, um, they're a ladder truck, but they don't do anything really well. And what we've experienced with our 75 foot quint is we can't even reach the peak of a second story house on Huron Avenue, which if you're familiar with that area of town, the homes are not that far back from the road. So that's one thing that they recommend quite a bit um, that I and a lot of other fire chiefs just don't agree with. Um, the last vehicle we purchased was a rescue pumper. It was a combination of our rescue squad and a pumper. It allowed us to combine two vehicles into one and eliminate three positions and still operate in an efficient manner. So we have taken on some of these things that um, are recommended. They also recommend that you change your responses to more of a non-emergency response. Uh, roughly five years ago, Chief Lestusky implemented that in our department. 
where we used to send everybody code three with lights and sirens on a fire call, we now usually only send one or two vehicles and all the rest go code two through the city. It's safer for our department, it's safer for the citizens. So we've already implemented that. A lot of the recommendations they have are to change your 24 hour schedules. Uh, that's not been something that's been effective across the nation. There's only one department that I know of that works on less than 24 hour schedules. I believe it's a part of Boston um, that is very busy and runs on a 12 hour schedule. We have, I have implemented that this year with some of our command staff. Um, I believe it's a very innovative schedule where I have them working shifts and eight hour days. Um, we've been doing it a few months and it's been working very well. So uh, we have implemented some of that. Uh, I don't know of any other department that is running their staff on that schedule and it, it is working well, as I said. Um, one of the other re recommendations you see in nearly every study is that we should have public safety officers. And I believe if you ask Chief Domogolski, he'll tell you that his officers barely have enough time to fight crime, much less come and train to be firefighters as well as police officers. Uh, so I don't think that that's a very good recommendation. So what can you expect a study um, to say about the Sheboygan Fire Department? I expect the study would come back and say that we need a dedicated training officer. That's a position that was eliminated through budget cuts three years ago from our department. We should have an organized fire prevention and investigation division. Again, uh, that's an area in our department that's been eliminated through budget cuts. Prior to this, we had three people in that division. Uh, we now just cover those duties with uh, the rest of our on-duty staff. It's probably going to say that we're deficient in the area of gathering useful information for putting together fire prevention strategies, and that's something that we're constantly working on. Uh, the move to the Spillman computer program definitely is going to help us out in that area. Um, but again, it takes people to put those, those programs together, and I think it's something that will show up as a deficiency in a study. So I ask, what are we doing that we're very efficient at? We currently, um, due to budget cuts again, are cross-staffing vehicles. What that means is when we're short-staffed in a fire station, we'll have three people. And when a fire call comes in, those three people get on the fire apparatus. When a medical call comes in, they get on an ambulance. Other stations are, or other cities are running seven people's fire stations and not cross-staffing. So I think we're very efficient in that manner. Uh, we're running two-man engine companies where the norm uh, across the nation is three- and four-man engine companies. Uh, as I said before, I developed a very innovative schedule for our command staff um, that's allowed us to make up for our deficiencies in the Fire Prevention Bureau and in the training and still get all of our work done. I found it very interesting to read in the paper uh, last week that uh, Orange Cross responds to roughly 3,600 calls a year for service. That's the same uh, number that we respond to in a year. Um, they utilize 33 employees and six ambulances to respond to those calls. We're doing that with roughly 19 employees and four ambulances. So I ask you, who's efficient? Our per capita cost is one of the lowest in the state, and it's decreasing, not increasing. Earlier this year, I submitted a budget. With that budget, I put in a three-year projection of what the fire department budget is going to do. Each of those years, I projected it to decrease. I don't know that you're seeing that from any other department in the city. We have much less staff, uh, staff personnel than other cities. We have four less. The average across the state is 11. We're running with seven. So that's 33% less uh, staff officers than other cities. We added the ambulance revenue that in 2012, after we pay expenses, we'll, we'll be paying for roughly 11 to 12 salaries and benefits of 11 to 12 firefighters. We've reduced the size of the department by 22 firefighters and three pieces of fire apparatus. We opened a new station and yet we still continued to provide excellent fire protection. I think one of the, uh, the common misconceptions that I hear about the Sheboygan Fire Department is you're staffed for the worst possible scenario. And that really couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, when I came in uh, the department 32 years ago, we had 27 or 28 people on duty. 
And when a house fire come in, came in, we usually left behind one engine and one ladder company with eight firefighters in case another call came in. We don't have that luxury anymore. Um, we now respond with between 15 and 20 firefighters. And when a house fire comes in, it's everybody in the city is there. And I think you're all familiar with uh, the term five alarm fire. It's something that's used um, very frequently if you're listening to Milwaukee uh, TV stations. What a five alarm fire roughly means is they're sending about 20 pieces of fire apparatus and 80 to 100 firefighters. We don't have that luxury. We can call one alarm, that's it. From there, we're calling back off-duty firefighters, which is basically paid on call, and we're summoning the volunteer fire departments to help us out. So if we're forced to take another piece of fire apparatus out of service, uh, we'll be changing the method of fire protection in the city uh, to where we're gonna be going to a, a clear paid on call department, simply because we just will not have enough to respond to every call that we do in its present form. Now, if that's the type of uh, fire protection the council desires for the citizens of the community, I guess the next step is up to you, and maybe we need to have the study done and see what it says. But before you proceed with that study, I think we need to ask ourselves these questions. Are you ready to increase the size of the fire department if that is what the study recommends? Are you ready to reduce the size of the fire department if recommended, knowing the outcry we heard when we closed Station 5 only temporarily? Are you willing to spend the money only to find out what we already know, that we have a very efficient and excellent run fire department? As a taxpayer, as a fire chief, if you can't answer yes to all three of those questions, I would proceed carefully. I'm aware of our strengths and I'm painfully aware of our, our deficiencies in the fire department. I compare ourselves to all the other cities in the, in the state regularly and to other state, uh, cities in the nation. If we decide to spend a substantial amount of money for a study, as a taxpayer, I certainly hope that we're committed to move on the recommendations that we receive. As fire chief with over 32 years of experience, I'm fairly certain a study will tell you that you have a fire department that, that is both efficient and excellent in what they do. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Van Akron, any other questions of the Chief? No, but I'm sure there'll be more. Okay. Alderman Lassard. Um, he said what I would have, what I wanted to say. So. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. First off, uh, I would like to thank Alderman Bellinger. Um, you know, in these tough budget times we're coming into, I appreciate the fact that you're being proactive and looking for, for um, opportunities. And I'm gonna echo something that Chief Herman made, um, and I, will, I wrote this down before you said it, but I'm gonna say it anyways. You know, again, if, if we're not willing to take a look at what the study, both sides, good and bad, um, if we're not, it, if we're not going to uh, accept and implement those recommendations, you know, then again, we're just throwing 40 to 50 grand out the window. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend this money um, if the recommendation comes back and says you're three firefighters down, you should hire three firefighters, and we say no. Again, we just threw 40 or 50 grand out the window. Um, just a point I can't remember now because. Uh, um, but the accounting method, we could bring in accountants um, and GASB versus FASB, um, GAP versus non gap all these types of accounting methods. Um, I don't think you get five people lined up in a room, or accountants at least, it'd be an awfully interesting party, but you couldn't get five accountants probably to agree on what the final number would look like, and that's part of the challenge because there's not a right and wrong. You know, if you look at it from a marginal accounting stand, uh, standpoint versus a true cost accounting, all those types of things, they're all right. It's just a different method of getting there. So um, again, I would encourage you to think about this. Um, I personally um, don't have a problem with the study, but the council in this body has to be willing to accept its recommendations. And in the three years I've been here, that hasn't been the case. We get the recommendations, but if not the outcome we like, then we say, well, there's something wrong with the study. So give that some thought um, as you're 
contemplating this. Alderman Bourne, but before, is it a question of the yeah, chief? Yeah, it's a question okay, for the thank chief. You. Thanks, Mayor. Chief, uh, in some of the studies that you were talking about that you reviewed, uh, did they make any comments in any of those studies about other departments like yours that runs an ambulance service? Any, any recommendations in that regard? And then also, were there, were there any of those studies where the departments had ambulance services, but they also had a private provider in that community? Was there any, did you find anything in, uh, having to do with the ambulance service in that regard in those reports? I, I did not see any that went to as deep as um, having a private there at the same time, although there are a number. Um, that's not an uncommon um, system to be in place. Um, there are a number of articles out there. In fact, I think just in the last week or two, uh, Cleveland, Ohio just merged their EMS and fire departments together. Um, and there's a, a rather lengthy report out on um, the reasons that that makes sense and why it's a perfect fit. That answer your question? That's fine. Any other questions of the chief? Thanks, Chief. Any other discussion? Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I like the idea of this uh, study. However, I, I don't think I'm going to support it, mainly because um, it, it's kind of been said a couple times tonight already. We, we've had studies done before, and we haven't followed them. It, it, I, it's really hard to justify spending any money for this. With that being said, we, we do have a fire chief that has proposed many different plans. When it comes down to it, this body needs to pick one of those plans. And whether, if it's a plan that sticks with what we have right now, then that's what we're gonna stick with. Otherwise, somebody proposed one of the plans that he has projected, or he has proposed in the past, because he is the subject matter um, expert here in the city, and we constantly talk about how we pay our directors and chiefs a lot of money to do their jobs, and then um, not follow what they say. So once again, he, he's come up with a long range plan. He's proposed different options, whether it be paid on call, cu cutting a station, cutting two stations. I, I think we already have this. It's just this body needs to decide what they want to do and I don't think a study is going to help that. Are you withdrawing your second or you're still going to win? No. Okay. Just curious. Alderman Van Acker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I said, we had very lengthy discussions at strategic fiscal planning in reference to this, and, and I too am not going to support this measure um, for several reasons. One of the uh, points that hasn't been discussed is, is the public input. The public has had the opportunity over the last several years to weigh in on the fire department um, in, in form of a referendum in which they indicated they, they wanted the ambulance service as part of the fire department, as, for, um, as part of the Whitewater survey that we spent approximately $40,000 on last year in which the results of that indicated that they were pleased with the services they were getting from the fire department and they felt that the services of the fire department was one of the highest priority services that the, the city provides. Um, again, the people have indicated that they appreciate what the fire department does and they have indicated that they want the fire department to have an ambulance service. I agree with uh, Alderman Carlson that we have uh, an operational plan that was supplied by the chief last year, which gives operational plans for several different versions of the fire department moving forward. And, and we did act upon that. We simply said at this point in time that we felt continuing with the current level of service, with the current uh, staffing <coughs> and um, firehouses was the appropriate way to go for all the reasons that we went over, uh, I believe approximately a year ago, again, response times being involved, cost of new uh, fire departments and so on or uh, new stations and so on. Again, it was, it was decided by this, by this body to put this to bed and to continue at the level that we are operating at. Uh, as the chief stated, we have made, or he has made and his department has made many changes over the last several years to become more and more efficient and to make the, the per capita cost for our citizens less and less. I, and I applaud his efforts and, and I, I fully expect that he's going to continue and the fire department as well as other departments are going to try to find ways to make the, the cost of running services less but at the same time keep the, the high level of service. So I can't support this because again I think we've received all the information. I think this body has acted upon um, the recommendations and the possible uh, outcomes of an operational plan and we've decided to keep the fire department as we are operating currently. Um, as he stated uh, when he brought the uh, budget proposal to public protection and safety, 
he's the only city department or the, the fire department is the only city department that actually decreased their budget request from last year. I think they're doing a good job to cut their costs and at the same time providing a very high level uh, of service to our city. And I, I don't think that if this study comes back and says we should close two fire stations that this body would be willing to do that. I, I certainly wouldn't. I don't think the people here would be in favor of that. And if this study comes back and says we need to hire five more fire depart or uh, five more firefighters and increase apparatus, I don't think we have the funds to do that. So as the chief stated, if we're not able to, to follow through on what the possible recommendations of this study would be, we're really just wasting our money and wasting our time and, and the cost estimates that we've heard for this are fifty to sixty thousand dollars we've all talked over the several, last several months that we have financial and, and budgetary concerns going forward i just can't see spending the money when we have those information the body has acted the people have had the opportunity to give their <laughs> input I, I guess i just really don't know why we're spinning our wheels and continually coming back to this Alderman Dellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the fire chief for his comments. Um, and um, I would like to say that, um, that the, the comments made by several aldermen that um, they don't understand why we would do a study because we never act on anything anyway is really a sad commentary on this body. If you're going to spend money, you're going to get a professional opinion from somebody that is a, uh, an expert on the subject matter, and you're not going to follow the recommendations. Well, that's your prerogative as this body. But if you're, you know, if you're going to put the time and effort into get an independent third-party study and not follow it, you know, then you know, then I guess I'm not in favor of spending the money either. If everybody's just going to ignore anything that comes in. And if you're afraid of what your answer you're going to get, I mean, nobody knows what they're going to get. Are you going to have to increase personnel, buy new equipment? Are you going to have to shut down fire stations and get rid of employees? You know, nobody knows what that outcome is going to be. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't have a predetermined expectation of what it should be. I just know that there's a lot of people out there that question this. It's politically and emotionally charged subject matter. And, you know, I would like to have it finally put to bed and put to rest, let the chief continue to do the job that he's uh, charged to do. And again, again, I don't have any um, bias or, uh, you know, I think the chief's doing a great job and with what he's got and the, he's a good steward of the tax dollars. I will say that over and over again. I'm not here to attack the fire department, his leadership or anything like that. It's just an issue that's, you know, since I've lived in Sheboygan, been one that's always been brought to the forefront. And now that I'm a member of this body, I thought it should be brought forward and see if we could look at, you know, a better way of doing things possibly. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And to a shock to a lot of you, I wasn't the proponent behind this one, but um, I do echo a lot of what Alderman Bellinger did have to say. It is kind of a double-edged sword, the way you look at it. Um, are you gonna spend the money to have the survey done and then not do what the survey says? And like Alderman Bell Bellinger said, those comments, that does reflect on us. That, that's not a good comment to say, yeah, we've had sur surveys done that we don't follow through. That's neither here nor there. Um, back to the Whitewater survey that we paid $18,000 for, or not $40,000. But um, yeah, there were some of the stuff in there we didn't follow, others we did. Some stuff we already knew, but that's what you do. You also get what you pay for. We paid $18,000 when we probably should have paid forty. dollars you know, and get a good study done. But, um, and as I keep hearing a couple of people throw out the referendum that we had. That was less than a 500 vote swing, which I had many phone calls after that saying that they were lied to. They voted one way and they were lied to and they felt bad and they should have voted the other way. Um, and it wasn't in favor of it that they were lied to. Um, they were lied to the opposite way. So that 500 vote swing was kind of a big thing. Basing my, my voting on a select handful of our taxpayers is tough. You can't go off of a group, small group of people, the, Maybe people will say silent majority or the vocal minority. Well, some of the vocal minority you're trying to base your opinion on, you're voting. No, we have to do what's right, what's fiscally <laughs> responsible for the city too. So don't, I mean, you can't keep throwing a referendum back out there. Back to what he actually wants to have done here is having this survey done. It does put a lot of things to rest. If it says we need 15 more firefighters, well, I guess we have to hire 15 more firefighters. Well, you have to find the money. But if it says we have to cut, 
I don't think the body has the gumption to do the cut. Hiring, I have a feeling they have a gumption to hire, but I don't <laughs> have that in me to go out, spend the money, have it done, and not follow what they have to say, either good or bad or ugly. So you have to put that in perspective, like Alderman Hammond said. You know, think about what your outcome is going to be if we actually do this. Think about it now before you vote on it, if you're going to follow through with it. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. As for the motion, the motion was to accept, and speaking with the city attorney and the clerk, we would need a motion to draft the resolution to authorize the uh, city administrator and city purchasing agent to to go up for bids, put together, uh, put together a, a bid proposal or go up for bids. Is that what you meant by your Sure. Motion? If that's what they believe. Second. <laughs> so we're going to be drafting a resolution authorizing the city administrator and the city purchasing agent to go out for proposals for bids. Any discussion? Who was quicker on the gun here? Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Uh, I, again, am going to uh, support going out and getting the RFP. That does not mean that I'm going to support actually doing the survey, but I don't think there's any harm in getting the RFP. We're doing this with our, with our paid professionals. We're not paying anybody, any, I mean, other than the salary that we pay our, our professional staff in the city to get the RFP. So I will support getting the R, going out and getting the bid, but I reserve judgment on whether I'm gonna support the survey. Thank, Thank you. you. Alderman Bellinger, before we start, remind all the council, you're supposed to talk only twice on each thing, but I'll allow you to do that being the author, and in many times you were asked the question, not so. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I was I was just going to echo the same things. That it was just a request for proposal. It's not a actual, you know, whether we're going to go forward with it or not. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just in the point of what Alderman Bourne said earlier on what the parameters are on what we're asking for. Who's setting? Who's going to set up the parameters on what we're going to ask these people to come in and do the study on? That's what. Uh, Director Modio, and who else is going to have input on what they're looking for? The chief obviously has read study, so he needs to have the input on what they're going to dig into, but who else outside is going to ask for what we need? Is that a question? I, I think yeah. the motion is to allow Mr. Modio and the um, purchasing agent to come up with that RFP. And to add on it, to present that to the council so that the council is comfortable with what the scope of the study is because really the scope can be you know as wide or as focused as as the council wants it but at least that would uh, set a framework so the staff could work on drafting something present it to the council if the council says yeah go with that then we've got a framework if you want to tweak things, you want to look, study certain aspects, you can do that. So that was your motion to have them bring back a RFP? Sure. Second. Mr. Modio. Sure. Come on up. I believe if we're going to do this, we need a scope of work, and it shouldn't be up to a city administrator nor a purchasing agent to set the scope of work. I think it should come from the governing committee. That identifies the scope of work that we go out and request the quote for. Alderman Donahue. Um, which goes back to my original comment, and I'm not sure I have an answer to it, is what is it that we are studying? Are we looking at a zero-based from the bottom up review? Are we looking at the ambulance service? What, it is, what is it that we are looking for? And then what is the context for city budget issues and how we do business in all of our departments uh, in terms of what our citizens are looking for? So again, I'm just uncomfortable with the process 
it's like a little flying saucer that's coming in. And you know, <clears throat> the beans on the saucer may be friendly or they may not be, but we really don't know. So again, I, I just, at this point at least, without a better context, it seems to me uh, to be ill-considered to even start struggling with what is it that we're looking at, uh, which obviously would impact cost as well. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. <coughs> you know what you're voting on? Mm -hmm. We are voting on the uh, giving the city administrator and the purchasing agent the ability to come back with an RFP for approval to the council on looking at the fire department efficiencies or fire department, whatever, however was put in his resolution, his communication, correct? To, to solicit RFPs for a three-party study. Yes. Lassard? No. Lewandowski? No. Manachek? No. Raisler? Yes. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bercy? Aye. Longman? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Foran? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? No. Donahue? No. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Cobb? Aye. Nine eyes, seven no's. Motion carries. Seven seven for strategic making no recommendation on common council regarding resolution to approve private contracting of garbage collecting. Alderman Hammond. All right, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for discussion uh, purposes, I will move to accept and adopt and um, also move to um, uh, approve the uh, contracting of garbage collection for Second. discussion purposes. Second for discussion purposes. And approve what did you, what was the, the last? Contracting of garbage. Because we need to follow on to that, so. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adapt the non-recommendation of nothing from the strategic and and adopt the private collection of garbage and approve private, private, well, contracting. private contracting of garbage yep. under discussion alderman ham alderman bellinger <laughs> thank you mayor um sue could you put up that First slide. Which one would you like? Um, the budget oh. impact. <clears throat> is that the right one? Yes. Okay. That that is that is the correct one. Um, again, at uh, strategic fiscal planning, this came out with no recommendation, so I feel like I'm sort of swimming upstream again. <laughs> but um, what I would like to do is look at the possibility of the city contracting out its garbage collection. Uh, it wouldn't be a true privatization where we would just get out of the business of collecting garbage. It would be that we would contract with um, a independent contractor and we'd put it out for bid. It would be a three or five year contract <coughs> and we would manage that contract and it would be billed to the citizens on their uh, water bill currently like the garbage fee is being done right now. Uh, why do I want to do this? Well, the reason I want to do this is if you can scroll down a little bit on there so the people at home can see this as well. Um, we are looking at, if you look at 2014 and 2015, significant <coughs> budget deficits that are projected and how are we going to address those. Uh, in the strategic fiscal planning meeting, uh, one of the uh, committee members uh, mentioned that we put the garbage fee in place to buy us three years so we could deal with this issue. And my comment to him was, well, we've got a year already under our belt, basically. We're into November, beginning of November, and nothing has been done uh, to address the, you know, the upcoming years and the projected deficits. So my solution is to have a private contractor and we've gotten a preliminary, preliminary bids from them, 
and it's going to come in at a cost of roughly $9.50. Currently, the city pays $8.58 as part of the tax levy for garbage collection, or $1.6 million a year annually is what that comes to. There's approximately 16,088 households or residences that are assessed that tax. So um, the city can do it more efficiently than a private contractor. So why are we looking at this? Well, the city does not, is a not-for-profit organization. A uh, private contractor is for profit, hence the dollar more per resident um, fee for collecting the garbage. And the economic impact that you will see if we were able to do this would be in 2013, you would see a surplus uh, of 786,000. In 2014, 390,000. And in 2015, uh, this initiative would completely wipe away the $1.7 million projected deficit. Um, and one of the things that's uh, brought to my attention is, well, how soon could we get this accomplished? Uh, we're not going to be able to do it effective January 1st, and I by no means have that expectation. Um, what I would like to see, and I think would be reasonable, if we were to move forward with this initiative, is to have a target date of April 1st. So beginning of second quarter, uh, we could have this in place and we could you know, move forward and, and go on from there. Um, if you just scroll up to, uh, back up to the top a little bit more, Sue. <clears throat> the benefits of doing this, um, you avoid a $1.5 million purchase of new trucks. Uh, you sell the existing fleet to the private contractor. Uh, the potential to hire our employees uh, based on them passing their uh, predetermined uh, employment screening. And there would be a freeze in the tax levy for three years. We wouldn't have to worry about increasing the taxes. So um, for a relatively nominal cost, it is going to cost, right, right now we're being charged $7.16 for the garbage fee for this year. Uh, my proposal is to have it become $9.50. That's an increase of $2.34 or an increase of $28 per year. And for that, we get um, a surplus in 2013, a surplus in 2014, and uh, we've fill our hole in 2015 of $1.7 million. So that's the, the, the basis and the, the thought behind doing this. Uh, when I became an alderman, I wanted to become part of the solution and uh, not to be part of the problem. Um, I see a big problem up there. I haven't seen any solutions come forward on how we're going to deal with it. Um, I want to be proactive and I want to look at it. And um, before, these, my fellow aldermen take a vote on this, I would just like them to think uh, for the, um, the minimal increase in fees, $2.34 a month uh, additional in $28 a year per residence, um, you know, look at the benefits that you're going to achieve from that. And um, I know uh, Director Beeble has um, scheduled for its capital improvements the next three years, approximately $500,000 of uh, replacement for garbage trucks each year. So that's where the next three years we're going to be spending $1.5 million. And I want to be preemptive and see if we can't uh, hold off on that and see if, you know, doing this would make more sense, you know, in the long run. So that's, that's kind of uh, where I'm at with that. And if you don't do anything, uh, you can see at the bottom of the page, you're going to be looking at a $420,000 deficit in 2014, $1.7 million in uh, 2015, and $1.5 million of new garbage expense trucks that you'll be looking at in the next three years. So you're looking at about $3.6 million hole uh, that you're going to have to figure out some way to deal with. And you know, how we deal with that, you know, I, think this is, I think this is a tremendous solution. And, um, you know, I, I just think it's, it's, it's the way to go. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Pellon. Alderman Van Dool. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So basically what the taxpayers would see is um, January 1st, their water bill 
um, for the garbage fee will, is going down to $5 per month. Then beginning April 1st, it would go up to $9.50 per month. That number would never go down. It would probably continue to go up. But the council would no longer have budget problems for the next three years. So that's all good for us. But I'm not, I think my taxpayers aren't going to be real happy with that. Thank you. Alderman Donahue. Mine is just a point of order. I think our um, motion is contradictory. Um, the, uh, no, the motion for no recommendation would be, I think, the same as except in file, would be my sense. And so we have a, a motion that is no recommendation plus a motion to approve. So I would either split it or ask for a revision. I, I would certainly defer to your opinion on that. But it, if we vote yes or no, we're, we're voting in contradictory ways within the context of the same motion. Unless I misunderstood, and I may have misunderstood the motion, but. I don't well, think you misunderstood. I this, this is the same issue we had on the prior document where. Which got very messy, and I think there's the just a way we can do one or the, the other. The council is a recommendation from the Strategic Physical Plan Commission Committee to make no recommendation to the council. So that's what, that's the committee report before you. So you can accept and adopt that, but that does nothing. That leaves you at square one. You've made no recommendation, so you need to, in addition, or as part of that, decide whether you're going to do something with the underlying <coughs> resolution to seek, look at private alternatives, or you're just going to file that. So, uh, so that, that has to be part of this accept and adopt, because uh, you could do it as two different votes. You can accept and adopt, and then you're sitting there uh, at square one. But at some point, you need to deal with the underlying resolution. Now, the actual document that was at Strategic was a communication, not a resolution. So you either got to accept and file the communication or adopt and draw a resolution to ask what you're doing. So I oh, guess, Clerk. Mayor, I believe I'm looking at there's resolution 82, 12, 13. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay that was attached to the committee report. Does that answer your question? Uh, sadly, no. Um, <laughs> uh, well, uh, so we can simultaneously within the same motion vote, vote to accept the no recommendation and vote to accept the recommendation. I think it's just cleaner. I, 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 I would move that we split the question. Okay. Second. I, I think we'll do that. We'll, we'll vote on the recommendation of the committee, which is no recommendation. And if that passes or fails, we'll move forward from there. So first we're gonna vote on the recommendation of the strategic not to do anything, which would basically kill it. No, it's just making no recommendation to the council. It's this is the council, so they would be so accepting nothing. That, right. Either way you vote, okay. it doesn't matter. Correct. It's been moved and seconded or to accept and adopt the committee report. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, I'm sorry, let's do a roll I call. An, so I need an explanation. I have a All right. On here. Steve? The... You have before you <clears throat> the committee report by strategic fiscal plan. The report is it recommends sending it to the council with no recommendation. So if you want to accept that report, then you pass that and you've got, you got the underlying document with no recommendation coming from a committee. And then as a secondary matter, you need to do something with the underlying document. Either pass it, file it, okay. refer it to a committee or do whatever. So an I vote is First. you're accepting it, and then you can still discuss the underlying document later. Right. Right. A no vote would kill it. No. Well, an, an I vote is just to accept the committee's report, right. which is no recommendation to the council. So it's somewhat of a nullity, but at least it, it deals with the committee report. 
then you've got so you've got the underlying resolution there with no recommendation and the sky is the limit as to what you want to do with the underlying resolution at that point. Let's call the roll on the committee report. Lewandowski? What is it again exactly? <laughs> Sorry? What is it exactly again? Uh, I vote would be to accept the committee's report of to have no recommendation to go forward. Aye. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Mercy? Aye. Mongeman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hannon? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cobb? Aye. Elisard? Aye. 16 ayes. Alderman Carlson? Alderman Van Akron? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would then make a motion to file the underlying Second. Document. It's been moved and seconded to file the resolution. Corey. Under discussion, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To get, to get back to the, the document itself, um, I, I won't be supporting the document for uh, a variety of reasons that we discussed at strategic fiscal planning in length. Um, the main one being is, is, again, the current budget proposal going forward is set to reduce the garbage fee from its current uh, rate of approximately $7 down to $5, this proposal would actually increase that, almost double it, up to $9.50. Um, I, I understand and I, and I agree that uh, um, we have budget concerns and they're, they're listed here and I agree with Alderman Bellinger that if we continue to do nothing as the current budget proposal that, that uh, we're gonna be voting on, I believe at the next meeting, continues down that road, we're gonna continue to, to have these problems. But I'm not in favor of our solution to our financial problems is to charge our citizens more. And that essentially is what this is doing. I, I understand for the city and the city's financial situation that's beneficial to the city, but I'm not here to represent the city. We, we pay department heads, we have city employees that represent the city. I represent my district and the people from my district, and I don't think they are in favor, and I'm certainly not in favor, of solving our financial problems by making them pay nearly double the garbage fee that they're not happy with now. Um, it, it was stated, and I certainly was the one that brought it up as strategic fiscal planning, is that we had in, put this in place to give us a three-year window to deal with our financial problems. We have a budget proposal right now that would basically do away with one year of that. Uh, again, I agree, if we continue the, to go down that road, nothing changes, but to, to say that we're just gonna shift our costs of doing business to our, to our city taxpayers and our city residents and make them pay double for the services that we supply, I just think that's a poor way of doing business. We need to consider the ways to cut costs rather than just making them pay more. And that's what this does. It's, consider, it's just con considerably increasing the cost and shifting the cost of doing business to our, to our citizens. And, and as Alderman Vanderwilly pointed out, we have no control over the, the service that we'll be getting or where that cost goes from there. So I can't support this. We've all received calls in reference to the garbage fee and, and people wanting to do away with the garbage fee and, and not wanting the garbage fee. This proposal almost doubles the garbage fee as, as it is set to be, and I just, I just can't support that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. <clears throat> when we uh, talked about this last year, I got about 30 phone calls and emails about this, and the bottom line with my constituents uh, was that they would possibly support outsourcing garbage for 950 or the last year I thought it was 850, whatever it was, but they would not support it if the <coughs> $1.6 million didn't come off the tax levy. So we're still going to be paying, we're still going to be paying the at least my understanding, we're still going to be paying the 858 a month uh, that's on the tax levy now, plus we're going to charge our constituents another 950 to have a private hauler. <coughs> and uh, on that basis, listening to what my constituents said loud and clear, I, ca I can't support outsourcing garbage at this time. 
Thank you. Alderman Lewandowski. Thank you. I also can support this because I'm against raising the garbage fee, but my concern also is if we get rid of the garbage trucks, how do we plow snow in winter? It's not related. Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, to Alderman Lewandowski's question, there, um, I've already asked that question to Director Beeble, and they are not related. We no longer use garbage trucks for snow plowing. So um, that wouldn't have an effect on that service at all. So it's completely separate and, and, and unrelated. Um, to Alderman Bourne's concern, um, Sue, could you put the second <coughs> document up that looks like that? Okay, um, Alderman Bourne, here's the um, economic impact if we were to implement the nine, to pr the privatization of garbage and reduce or take the $8.58 per residence off the tax rolls. So immediately you would have a deficit of what, $869,000 the first year, 1.2 million in 2014, and 3.4 million in 2015. So it is unrealistic to take that off the tax roll. And you can tell your constituents that. I mean, that's the math. I've run it by Director Amodio. Um, he agrees with the math, and, and it is what it is. I would certainly like to be able to do that, but we can't do it um, without putting ourselves in, in real jeopardy. And to, an to answer a, uh, or to address, um, Alderman Van Akron, he mentioned that this was a one-year fix. Actually, if you look at it, the, the previous slide, it's a three-year fix. It's 13, 14, and 15, and there's surpluses in 13 and 14, and you fill the hole in 15. So it's a three-year fix. It's not a one-year fix. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, Somewhat of a generic comment that I'm going to throw out. Um, you know, again, whether you support this or not, um, these are the tough decisions we're going to have to make over the next several years, ladies and gentlemen. Um, when we look at the budget, and believe me, been in and out of this budget probably more than most people in this room, other than maybe Director Amodio, um, there's not a lot of low hanging fruit. It's going to come down to services, bodies. What do we want to get out of? What do we want to stay in? You know, what is the structure of the services that we offer to our constituents and to the, to the city taxpayers in general? So again, you know, I commend you, John, for bringing this forward, or sorry, Alderman Bellinger, <laughs> for bringing this forward. Um, you know, I appreciate it. But these are some of the tough decisions that we're going to have to make going forward as a council. Um, and uh, you know, there's going to be a lot more conversations like this because lowering the levy is probably not a realistic expectation regardless of what we do, okay? So again, um, you know, give that some consideration as you're making your, making your choice. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Van Acker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and I agree with Alderman Hammond. The, those are the tough decisions that we're gonna have to make. I just, I can't support the, the solution being to increasing fees. Um, I, I think, I just, as a theory, I can't support that. Maybe it's my conservative nature that I'm known for, but I, I just can't support our solution being the increasing of fees rather than trying to find ways to cut our spending and reduce our spending and, and, and reducing that for our citizens. The only solution, and, and again, I, I agree with Alderman Bellinger, and I'm glad that he's bringing these types of ideas forward. I, I think we need to have continuous discussions as to how to solve our fin uh, financial problems. Um, I just don't agree with the, the solution being to increase the cost without trying to cut spending, without trying to uh, look at and decide what services we need to be involved in or what services we need to decide whether or not we need to get out of. Um, again, I, I, I'd much rather see us solve our problems going down that road by cutting spending and deciding what services we may or may not need or may not be able to afford anymore rather than just saying we're gonna make our citizens pay more. Thank you. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, great, a lot of talk about this proposal here, and we haven't seen any proposals coming from, no offense, Mr. Alderman Backroom, but 
he has a proposal there to help. You shoot down all the proposals that are there, but don't come up with any recommendations to help. Yeah, I'd love to see to cut taxes and everything go down too. You have to make some proposals. That's one that's there that the math is right and it's there to help. It's there to get us through. It is three years, but if you don't do anything or bring no proposals forward, that's where we sit right now today. We're in a problem today because there's been no proposals in the past. These are proposals that are coming in. Thank you, Alderman Belger, and a couple other people that have brought in other proposals. This is something we need to look at. This is something we need to do because it does fix it. Nobody wants to raise taxes. Nobody wants the taxpayers to pay more. This is reality. It's not going to be paying more because after the five years or the three, third year comes with the garbage fee, we're in that big hole. Great. Now you're in charge of them 10 times more to make up for the last three years. I don't agree with that. This is a smaller step to keep us going forward. This is what has to be done to look at it this way, not, okay, I want to cut all spending and I'm not going to shoot down every proposal that comes there because it increases what my taxpayers have to pay. Well, a small increase now beats a triple, du double, triple, quadruple increase in three years from today. So this is a great proposal. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger, and I support this wholly. Any other discussion? Harry Nunn, clerk will call the roll. An I vote would be to file the resolution. Vote to file would be to kill it. Yes. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? Aye. Bellinger? No. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. And Lewandowski? Aye. 14 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 7-8. And seven nine will be referred. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I would actually like to, uh, in light of new information, I would actually like to pull seven nine for a vote tonight. Seven eight is. Seven eight is referred. Eight will be referred. Seven nine is from strategic. Asking referral to salary and grievance. I need a motion. There was no second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt the strategic. What are you doing? Thank you, Mayor. I would actually like uh, us to vote on this tonight. In uh, strategic fiscal planning, um, there was some information brought forward by Alderman Van Akron in regards to a meeting that he had with the city attorney a few weeks ago. And that information that he shared doesn't actually uh, match up with the information that the city attorney presented with us um, in, with this memo that is, it should be on everybody's desk here. Um, would you like to uh, expand on that before I, I go further? Mary McQueen. Before we do that, we need a motion to accept and adopt the committee report as stated. So, so we move and seconded to accept and adopt the committee report for, to file, I mean to refer. refer. If I could clarify on, on that motion to accept and adopt the committee report, the com that committee report is to recommend referring it to salary and grievance. So if you are in support of referring it to salary and grievance, you'd want to vote aye on the motion. If you don't want it to re get referred to salary and grievance, you would vote no on the motion. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm kind of disappointed that, it's, that the motion was to pull it. Um, I feel kind of shanghaied on that, and, and I don't appreciate that. Um, I would like it to go to salaries and grievance so we could at least vet it there um, with the information and have Attorney McLean come at that point in time. Um, so that would be my recommendation, and I would appreciate that. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, actually kind of feel shanghaied. Um, we were given um, very misleading information in the last meeting, which I think swayed people's decision to send us to salaries and grievances. It's also come to my attention that there's a little game that might be played with a three-man hold, which at the next council meeting would re, uh, make this not even eligible for discussion. Next council meeting is not till after the 1st of December. So this would really be the only opportunity to have this conversation um, without the politics and gamemanship. So I too 
am very disappointed because um, it was not intentional to Shanghai U. I think salaries and grievances would have did a fine job, but it's very clear that the um, city attorney's uh, conversation with Alderman Van Acker and, and what he ex uh, expressed to us in that meeting um, didn't match up. So you know, I apologize if you feel shanghaied, but that was certainly not the intention of, of us at this point. We just want this to make sure it gets to a conversation and a vote. Alderman Van Acker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I certainly, I guess I would refer to uh, uh, City Attorney McLean to discuss, uh, I guess I, I will certainly first of all clarify my conversations and my, my, uh, my comments last night, um, simply that I had a meeting with uh, uh, City Attorney McLean to discuss this um, proposal that was being forwarded and at that time I had uh, questions as to the legality or the possibility of that. At that time he indicated that at that time uh, Alderman Carlson had not consulted with him at all in reference to this. Um, he, he did inform me that we do have a municipal code that requires the setting of a, a full-time mayor's salary to be 13 months ahead of time. And I said, I, I feel that this would be in, uh, in contradiction to that law. He indicated it would really depend on the intent of the document. The document itself in no way says um, it, whether it's a full-time or a part-time position. Both Alderman Hammond and both Alderman Carlson both indicated at the meeting on Thursday that in no way are they attempting to change the cla uh, classification or clarification of the mayor's position to a part-time or full-time position. Um, it was the city attorney's uh, opinion in that meeting that unless you made the mayor's position a part-time position, that we do not meet the legal standards of our <coughs> municipal law or this resolution would not. And that's what I brought forward to the committee on Thursday night. Unfortunately, the city attorney was not there to discuss my legal concerns and that's what I brought forward is that we need to send this to salary and grievance so we had a, an opportunity to discuss this with Steve. If any part of that conversation is incorrect, Steve can certainly correct me here in a second, but that was the conversation we had. We have a municipal law that states that. Uh, again, the, the alderman bringing this forward, when asked by Alderman Donahue if this was a backdoor attempt to uh, make the mayor's position a, a part-time position, they both indicated no, that's not what the concern was. It was simply to lower the salary and, and to add the second paragraph in reference to uh, outside employment. Again, with that being the case, if that's the intent, the city attorney, and, and I have spoken with him again today in reference to this, he gave me his opinion that we do not meet the, our own municipal code uh, legal standard and timeline. So we would be again violating our own law by bringing this forward. Certainly, Steve, you, you can give that opinion, but that's exactly what you told me in your office this morning, and I'd like to hear you say that because they're sitting here, uh, I guess, questioning whether or not that's the case, and that's the information I gave on Thursday, and that's the information I got from you. Uh, well, I, I did draft this opinion at the request of Alderman Carlson, and, uh, you know, the, the uh, as it comes down to whether or not the proposal is to have the mayor's position as <coughs> either full-time or less than full-time. If it's less than full-time, then it's my opinion that the ordinance 29-106 that talks about the timing uh, of establishing the salary for full-time elected officials wouldn't apply if it's, if you're looking at not a full-time position. If it, if you're treating it as a full-time position at a salary of twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, then it's my opinion that it's not timely because if it's a full-time position, it should have been adopted. And in fact, there was a, an ordinance adopted back in March that does comply with that full-time elected official uh, ordinance that set the salary for the next term. Uh, so it's not clear on its face. Uh, what it is at the, the ordinance. Uh, I read it as the intent is to make it a part-time position based on going from the existing proposal for next term as 50,000 for the first year uh, to going to the first year of the next term at $25,000. So half of what the original or the current salary for the next term is and that coupled with the, uh, the language in the second provision that uh, 
takes away language in all the other uh, elected official salary ordinances that say that uh, the, uh, the full-time elected official can't uh, engage in outside business activities during normal city office hours. Uh, if you take that away, in my view, the intent of that is to say that the mayor could work outside business activities during office hours. I get the, in the intent being that you're creating a part-time position. But it's not expressly stated in there, and I think it ought to be one way or the other. And, uh, that, for that reason, as well as the fact that the existing ordinance that was passed back in March for the next term specifically states it's for a full-time mayor position. Uh, so that's clear. The, the current proposal, which would purport to repeal that March ordinance, doesn't say full-time, part-time, it just says the office of mayor. So you need to clarify that one way or the other, I believe. Uh, so, so that's the essence of my opinion, is that if, if the office of mayor for the next term is a full-time position, the salary under city ordinance needed to be set uh, back last March. Uh, when, in fact, it was established last March. And you notice that document is subs of subs of subs of general ordinance number. That's <laughs> unprecedented in my experience. I've never seen a document like that. It shows that it went through a lot of different altered versions before it was finally acted on. Uh, so if... If you want to create for the next term, uh, have the mayor be part-time, set the salary at 25000 as it's set forth in that uh, uh, proposed ordinance, I guess I would suggest stating that it's part-time. And if it is part-time, then it's my opinion that it's proper to act on the salary change at this point up until December 1, which is the first day <clears throat> you can take out nomination papers for, for the office of mayor. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. The primary intent, and I, and I spoke on this during strategic fiscal planning, a few months back, and I, actually I don't remember how many months now, but we, we created the Chief Administrative Officer who took over the day-to-day -day operations of this city. Everything. And we are voting on a Resolution to streamline the, uh, or the or, uh, an ordinance change for the budgeting process, which includes a chief administrative officer and reduces the role of the mayor also <clears throat> in there. We are paying a chief administrative officer six figures to run this city. The, mayor, the mayor's position, in effect, has very little responsibilities going forward. That was the primary intent for this, the only intent for this. When we're talking part-time, full-time, I think it's just a, a game of words. We, we discussed this last time when, we, when this uh, resolution came forward. Because there's nothing stating, except for in our own ordinance, just in regards of setting the salary. If a, an elected official like myself wanted to work in City Hall 40 hours a week, there'd be nothing stopping me from doing that, that my, my pay would not increase. Or if I never showed up to a meeting, my pay would not decrease. Full-time, part-time is ir ir irrelevant. However, my intent was, I don't think we need to pay a mayor, regardless of who it is, $50,000 a year to do a job that, that, that is no longer there. The intent was the chief administrator has taken over the day-to-day -day operations and we're paying him over six figures a year. In terms of um, the actual, pro I, I know there's a motion on, on the table. However, I would like the chance to, to change that wording to make it fitting, turn it into a part-time position. I have no problem doing that. But like I said, the original intent was to reduce the salary and allow the person to work an outside job because we have a full-time person getting paid a lot of money to make all of the decisions and uh, manage the day-to-day -day operations. So is that your motion to change that or? There's already a motion on the table. To oh, but you're, you're, you would have to amend it to say a part-time mayor. 
I would first need a, a, a motion on the table to approve the resolution. There isn't hey. one. The motion is to file the resolution. No, the motion is to send it to salaries and grievances. Yes. Okay. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I again feel deceived in all this as we had a, a specific meeting at Strategic Fiscal Planning and both of you said this is not to be a part-time mayor. This was just to reduce the salary of the full-time mayor and allow them to work outside, including several other aldermen that were there and members of the public, but that's beside the point. Um, I, I guess I look at if we want to go to a part-time mayor, I think we need to put it in the hands of a referendum for the citizens to decide and not make that decision for the 16 or 15 of us that are here. And the other thing is the whole reason I wanted to go to salaries and grievance so we can have all this discussion there instead of, of, of having it here tonight. And, and I don't want to say wasting time, but uh, again, that, that's my whole reason why I want to go to salaries and grievance so we can clean some of this up and come back with a recommendation next time to the council uh, of what we're looking for. So I, I have no part in any political three-man hold or any games that are going on. Uh, I'm the chairman of salaries and grievance. We had a conversation prior to the meeting about it going there. Again, that's why I feel deceived that you both lied to me. Uh, and again, I, I just don't appreciate it. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, Boy, you know, I wish Alderman Riesler, um, you know, it's a, a little bit of a strong uh, inference. Um, I don't think anybody was lying to you. Um, I think, again, had the information from the council or from the meeting on uh, last week Thursday been accurate, um, the outcome of that may have been different. And I was fully intending on going to salaries and grievances with this, um, but again, uh, because of the gamemanship of some, um, I don't think this would have gotten a fair vote next, uh, or even came up for a vote at the next council meeting. My comment with respect to full-time and part-time mayor was that um, for some reason the city of Sheboygan, um, again, talking with the League of Municipalities, we're all full-time or part-time. And I believe that was my comment, that there's not a distinction between a full-time or a part-time older person. There's not a distinction between a full-time and part-time mayor other than apparently in our municipal code, um, it's just inferred based off of the level of pay that someone's getting. So, you know, that was my comment to, to Alderman Van Akron's comment as well. My comment was that, was, uh, that again, it doesn't matter whether it's full-time or part-time, um, nobody recognizes it. If it was Mayor Van Akron, he's a mayor 24-7. Work all the persons 24-7 regardless of what the pay is the pay infers how much work goes into it. Um, but again, we never had the argument of full-time versus part-time. I believe my comments were that the nature of the um, position or the pay would dictate how much uh, effort that goes into it. But to Alderman Carlson's point, you can work 40 hours a week as an older person if you want, which is technically a full-time job. So again, um, I'm very disappointed that this has to happen this way. And, um, I don't particularly have a problem with salaries and grievance because I know you'll give it an honorable vote um, up or down. I'm just not convinced that um, the, the games uh, at the next council meeting um, won't uh, preclude this from coming to, a, to an actual vote. So, um, but I'm, I would, would, um, would support it going to salaries and grievances. Um, um, for me personally, I don't care what the salary is. My concern is um, I think that the council making a decision on who can run for alderman or who can run for mayor and who can't run for mayor is ridiculous. The voters should decide whether it's okay for their alder or their mayor to have another full-time job. That's my stance on it. Um, if that was the only portion that passed, I'd be quite happy with that. If I wanted to run for mayor, the voters should decide whether Don can have his full-time job or not and still do a good job as mayor. So that's the part of the resolution or ordinance that I'm supporting because um, I think it opens up the pool of, of candidates. And again, the voters may decide, we don't want anybody that has a full-time job. We want them 100% dedicated to the city. I'm okay with that too. But I think everybody should have that option to run for mayor if they so choose. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. And I would put that in the form of a motion. If I we think could. the city attorney was clear though there is a difference between a part-time mayor and full-time mayor because of our municipal code. And if we don't change it, or under the current circumstances and, and with both of you implying that you'd wanna stay with full-time mayor, then 
our municipal code would say that you'd have to have it 13 months, correct? Yeah, that's that's the distinction in our municipal code. There There is a distinction between full-time and non-full-time, if you will. Uh, our ordinances, which are adopted by the council, the council can change those and, and maybe should look at that and and revisit that provision on setting the salary for quote full-time elected officials but it's there in effect uh, and it needs to be honored uh, and because of that ordinance uh, you do need to categorize the position as full-time or part-time if you were having this discussion back last february it wouldn't make any difference because uh, you would have met either the time requirement under the statute and and the city ordinance on setting the salary. And I might remind you, uh, back in March, uh, the council had already created the chief administrative officer position back then. There was a lot of discussion on what the salary was. I believe prior to it going to 50, it had been 76, somewhere, 74. Uh, so I think that was taken into consideration at one time. Uh, you know, I don't fault the council for looking at the salary for uh, the mayoral position or any elected position, uh, mine included, uh, for the next term. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 13 months ahead. <laughs> but uh, you've got the ordinance that's in effect. We've got to abide by that. I'm not going to uh, advise you to violate your own ordinance. And if, if it's a full-time position under our ordinances, the time is up for setting the salary for the next term. Follow up. Um, Attorney McLean, just as a point of clarification, under Section 2 where the, the allows somebody to have an outside business activity, that's not germane to whether it's a full-time or part-time salary. Is that something we could act upon even if the position of the mayor is still full-time? Is that something we can act on and not be outside of that or not be in violation of that ordinance? Yes, if you're strictly just saying that um, the mayor could work outside activities during uh, during city office hours that doesn't it's not affecting the compensation thank you uh, so th that would uh, wouldn't violate our ordinance thanks alderman Orn. <clears throat> thanks mayor van akron uh, I've, had, I've had the experience now to serve under three mayors since I've been up here, Mayor Perez, uh, Mayor Ryan, and now Mayor Van Akron. And uh, I think uh, starting last fall with some of, the, some of the difficulties we had with our former mayor, uh, thank God that we uh, brought uh, Mr. Amodio on to be our chief administrative officer. And it was very evident, it was very evident to me late last year and early this year before the recall that since Mr. Amodio took over, there was a lot less for Mayor Ryan to do at that time. And when we considered this back in March of 2012 with the $50,000 salary, I believe, I believe I brought in a document with Alderman Belt, or Alderman Belt brought in the uh, document that we were gonna consider doing a $24,000 salary at that time. And in light of the fact that I noticed last year uh, after Mr. Amodio came on board that Mayor Ryan didn't, didn't have nearly the things on his calendar that he did before, uh, previous to Mr. Amodio coming on board, and then seeing this year and recently amending that job description for Mr. Amodio, that's even gonna reduce the mayor's role even more. So I, uh, you know, based on what I've seen since last fall with Mayor Ryan and whether it would be Mayor Van Akron or some other mayor in the future, I just don't think the, uh, the duties of the mayor as we go forward uh, justify paying a $50,000 salary plus another fifteen dollars or $20,000 in benefits regardless who are, who, who's going to be our new mayor starting in April. So uh, I would support... I would support this $25,000 salary and giving our new mayor next year the option of having outside employment because I guess, you know, I would hate to have a, a new mayor come in and have this schedule that our mayor has now and the new mayor will have where, frankly, I think they might be bored, bored to tears with this job because there's just not going to be enough for him to do 
uh, from eight to five, five days a week. Uh, there just isn't. Now maybe before we had a chief administrative officer, we had the full-time mayor, they had more of a full-time calendar, yes. But going forward, that's, in my opinion, that's not gonna be the case from what I've observed. And I've definitely observed more of that since we passed this document back in March. Thank you. Alderman Carlson. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I have several comments. Um, the plain fact is, is that if we, state law says that for elective offices, we have until December 1st this year to amend the salary. The city has a more restrictive ordinance that really requires us to go out 13 months. I certainly defer to uh, Attorney McLean, but the question of how far a municipality can go in terms of amending the intent or the scope of state law is, is, a, is a complicated question. This does not answer it for me. What I do know at this point is that the only way under our municipal ordinance to go forward with what is in fact a part-time mayor position is the way that we go forward with that is to do it by December 1st and we say out loud that it is not a full-time position. Because if we say out loud it is a full-time position, we're out of luck, we can't go forward, okay? All right, within the course of one to two weeks, we are considering taking what I consider to be significant action to change the structure of city government. Now, the relationship between the mayor and the city, the chief administrative officer's positions, the, those offices, at this point is a somewhat confounded relationship. It is not necessarily, as I understand it, a peaceful relationship. It is not necessarily as productive as it could be because there are questions about who gets to do what. Within the course now of one week, or perhaps two weeks, but certainly by December 1st, if we in fact consider this to be a part-time job, we need to make the, all of those changes. And I just don't think that that's right. This is, this, what the mayor does and what the chief administrative officer does, those are complex questions. We know, speed kills. And for us to go forward, because we are under the, de the deadline of this December 1st, um, uh, cutoff time really is not good for the city. Now, I have, because I have been concerned about what, I, what appears to be a, a fair amount of conflict between the mayor's office and the chief administrative officer's office. And I have seen that primarily through budget deliberations, but there has been a struggle with the statutory language of what a mayor does, how those powers get delegated, and in fact, as Alderman Bourne said, the chief administrative officer does a lot of what the mayor used to do. So what does the mayor do? Well, I think we ought to talk about it. I drafted, it's not a, you can't give a job description to a, a, an elected official, but I've drafted a, a, some job duties and responsibilities in my proposal, um, which I'm not making formally at this point, and I had intended without the speed of, with which this is going, uh, to speak with you all uh, is that we meet as a committee of the whole with the mayor, with the chief administrative officer, and discuss within the context of what's good for the city and how we move the city forward and, and strategically where we want the city to be a year from now and three years from now, and not only from a budget perspective, but also as a place to live and what we offer our citizens to sit down, all of us together, in a round table, and, and talk about what we think the mayor ought to do. Now, I came up with 10, 12 duties that I think the mayor can reasonably perform, and that can maybe be performed on a part-time basis, and it can maybe be performed on a full-time basis. Maybe it's worth $25,000, maybe it's worth $50,000, but those are things that we should set, take some time to talk about. Now, there's this time crunch, but I'm gonna suggest to you that making what I consider actually to be a fairly radical change. And it is, I mean, in fact, 
In fact, if we proceed either tonight or with salary and grievances before December 1st to reduce the salary to $25,000, we have changed the structure of the mayor's office from full-time to part-time, both from a legal perspective and from a, uh, from a, uh, a purely practical perspective. So I think what we need to do is become just a little bit more friendly, not blindside, not get mad, not get lied to, not lie, but just sit down as responsible elected officials, which you know is a big deal. It's a big deal to be an elected official in my opinion. Sit down and, and discuss what it is we think that the mayor ought to do vis-a-vis -vis what the chief administrative officer does, vis-a-vis -vis what we do. As aldermen, you know, what is our role in all of this? So I will certainly support the motion as it stands now to refer this to salary and grievance, but I would be aggrieved if this council came to a decision to reduce the salary to $25,000 by December 1st. Speed kills. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to... Uh, echo some of the, the things that Alderman Donahue said. Um, I too um, have some concerns with the timing of this and the speed in which we would be enacting it. Um, I too contacted Dan Thompson at the League of Municipalities and had a lengthy discussion with him on this matter and he mentioned to me that no city the size of Sheboygan has a salary of, um, in the state of Wisconsin has a salary of $25,000. And he said he would be hard pressed to think of one that has one of 50,000. He says, usually you go the other way. Um, I share the same concerns with um, Alderman Hammond that um, we would like to get the strongest um, and uh, you know, the most vibrant candidates to fill this position. And you can argue yes or no the last few mayors whether we've had that and we've, we've got the bang for the buck. Um, I'm not here to debate that one way or the other. Um, what I would like to do is um, put, you know, put a hold on this for the time being, follow some of um, Alderman Donahue's suggestions, uh, and talk about it in some greater detail, um, because I think to move in such a swift manner, um, there's a thing called the law of unintended consequences, and you don't know what's going to happen, and um, the intent of increasing the pool of, of applicants, it just may backfire, and the only people that you're gonna be able to attract are uh, you know, people that are retired. And um, not that there's anything wrong with people that are retired, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you, want, you want to have a wider angry pool. Like to be. <laughs> so, but um, you know, that's my comments, thank you. <laughs> thank you, all of university. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Um, no offense to Alderman Bellinger or Alderperson um, Donahue, this isn't rushed. This has been at length talked about. Before your time on council, we have talked about this at length. I mean, to the point of beating a dead horse on it, and we've come to the same conclusion than not. And it hasn't been, this isn't a rushed decision by any means. This has been talked about for a long time. Um, I've been here three years. It was talked about my very first year on council. It was talked about. Not the same length it was in the last year, year and a half, but it was talked to at length. Um, so to say that we're just jamming it through, in my eyes, really isn't happening because it's been discussed at length. It's giving it, as Alderman Hammond said earlier, more of a fair chance to be spoken to or spoken about at length because we don't want it to be shunned. We don't want it to go away fast and on an ill intent either may or may not be there, but the perception of it may be there, which is perception is everything. So. This isn't being rushed. We've been talking about it at length. So this is something that, in my eyes, we actually came up with this last year, the same, almost the same salary, full-time, part-time, didn't matter. That was our part-time salary, and we set the full-time salary at 50,000. So it was spoken to about both ways for very lengthy discussions at all meetings. So this isn't being rushed. It's not being jammed through. Maybe from what, when you first saw it, you may feel like it's being rushed, but it really isn't. So I mean, this is something that, has that great length of discussion to it, so it's not uh, that scary of a thing. Thank you. Well, Amanda Bellinger. I, I would just like to respond can you, to Can you stand, please, just okay. for the... 
Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to respond to Alderman Versi. Um, we just went through this a few months ago and got it down. We went from 70 some thousand down to 50. And, you know, to say that it's not rushed, you know, maybe during your tenure there's been discussions and going on and everything. But, you know, twice in one year we're going to reduce the mayor's salary. But, you know, I think that's, I, I, I think that is rushed. I mean, I think it's, uh, there's not a lot of foresight that was put on, on the first vote then. If, if you might, you know, you could look at it that way too. So, um, you know, I, I, I want to think that there was some thought put into that first vote, and, um, you know, and, and if, I don't know what the intent is, if there's ill intent, if there's not ill intent, you know, there's an election coming up. You can elect, you know, hopefully that there will have some good candidates, and, you know, whoever runs, runs, and, you know, may the best man win or woman. But, you know, to, to do twice in one year, I think that would be unprecedented for a body like this to do. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I guess I should first start off by saying, as the author of this or ordinance, there there is no Ill, Ill intent. My my intent was to reduce the pay because of reduced responsibilities. That's my that's my only reason, and I stand by that. So I apologize to Alderman Racer in terms of uh, it, uh, my my motion. However, there there have been games played for quite a while now in this council. For a long time. No need to point out names or anything like that, but there have been games playing, and the there games have been played, and I think games will be continue to play, play through for the rest of this year. And that is why I pulled it forward tonight. We received a mis, mis, misinformation. It, it's, it's too bad the city attorney wasn't there last week when we met strategic fiscal planning. That's, that's why I wanted to have the discussion tonight. Once again, my intent was to lower the salary due to reduced responsibilities. To me, it doesn't matter who's sitting right there. <coughs> I don't care. What matters to me is how much we're paying that person. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, and I will not speak on this anymore, which will make everyone happy. I do care who sits in that seat. I'm a voter, my constituents are voters. I want the best candidate to sit in there, to work with the chief administrative officer, to work with the council, to, to move the city forward, to, to be someone who solicits businesses and, and, and works with everyone and works with the chief administrator. So I do care who's in that seat. And I wanna make sure I pay them the right salary to get the right person in there. Motion is to refer to salary and grievance. All those in favor signify. It's just the referral. Okay. Roll call. Bracelet? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? No. Wangaman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Warren? No. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Nope. Cuff? Aye. Lassard? No. Lewandowski is. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Matichuk? Aye. Nine eyes, six no's. Motion carries. 8-1 through 8-3 will be 8-1 uh, and 8-2, Alderman Hoff, along with 6-1, I believe. Yep. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Um, in reference to Resolution 6-1, I move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and second to suspend the rules. Discussion under dis suspending the rules? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage on 6-1. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Huff? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Matichuk? 
Aye. And Raisler. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 8 1. Alderman Kauf. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. I move to suspend the rules on 8 1 and Se 8 2. Can I take them both? Second. It's been moved, seconded to suspend the rules on both 8 1 and 8 2. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries to suspend. Alderman Kauf. I move that the ordinance be put, I move that both ordinances be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass both ordinances. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Mercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kauf? Aye. Bossard? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? No. And Vanderweel? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 8-3 will be referred to the City Plan Commission. 9-1, other matters. From the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning map for property located at 3711 South Taylor Drive. All the McCaff. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept and, and accept the committee report and pass the ordinance. Pass the res ordinance. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kaff? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 15. Motion carried. 9-2, a resolution, resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing entry into a contract for sand computer storage. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If it's okay, I'd like to also take 9-4 with this because they're both related to the same thing. One's just a budget transfer um, <coughs> for the uh, funding, and 9-2 is entering into the contract for said sand computer storage. The only thing is is that Alderman um, Hammond, one needs a two-thirds vote because it's a transfer. Okay, fair enough. Then we'll go 9-2. Um, I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? None, the clerk will call. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kauf? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15. Motion carried. 93 resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2012 budget. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you. I uh, move we put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Been moved and seconded to put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kopp. Aye. Lazard? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Bellinger? Aye. 15. Motion carried. 9 4 resolution by Alderman <coughs> Hammond, Trent, and Ressler authorizing transfer of appropriations in the 2000 budget. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. And moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cut? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Donovan? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 15. <coughs> Here you 9 5 General Ordinance by Alderman Hammond, Carlson, Donahue and rest are amending various sections of the municipal code relating to timetable for preparation and presentation of the proposed annual budget. Alderman Hammond. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. It's been moved, seconded that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Donahue? Aye. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Cott? Aye. Lassard? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Longaman? Aye. Again. Bellinger? Aye. <laughs> Warren, Aye. Carlson, Aye. and Decker. Aye. 15 hours. Motion carried under other matters, all the uh, city attorney. 10.1 is RO by uh, city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. 10.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Daniel Wilty requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 925A Michigan Avenue. That will go to public protection and safety. 10.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting communications from Sheboygan Area School District submitting their tax levy for the 2012 2013 school year. That will lie over. Again, don't forget to vote tomorrow. Alderman Hammond. Before we adjourn, comment, um, and thank you for indulging me. A lot of spirited debate today, um, but let's not forget what Sunday is. Um, it's Sunday, right? The 11th. Yes, yeah, Sunday. Sunday the 11th. Um, that's Veterans Day. Um, the reason we're able to have a lot of this debate is because of what those great veterans did for us. So I'd like to just um, take a moment and recognize those veterans and thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Motion Hammond. to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.